I'll show you how I get Blender and Unreal synced up without any extra downloads or plugins. We'll bring over a full environment at once, then I'll show you how you can continue developing and making changes within Unreal. By the end, you'll be able to create this fully playable environment, all on your own. A great piece of the indie game development puzzle. Let's get started. We start in Blender with our block out. The key here is composition. I like to start with the general building elements, pillars, the subway platform, tunnels, the tracks. Then I'll add some initial lights. Before we get into filling it in, let me show you something that's gonna blow your mind. This is my pipeline from Blender to Unreal. Step one is select everything that's going into Unreal, in our case, the block out mesh and lights. Step two, let's set up our export so it's quick. Go to File and Export, right click Universal Scene Description or USD and add to Quick Favorites. Quick Favorites is just the Q key. So from now on, select Objects and press Q for our USD export. We want Selection Only. Next, Visible Only will ignore anything that's hidden. We don't need animation here or hair. Yes, on UV maps, normals, and materials, everything can pretty much be left at the default value. Now the magic, export the file and open Unreal. I'm using the third person template so we can walk around. I added a new blank level. Now we need a plugin that ships directly within Unreal. So go to edit plugins and search USD. USD importer is the one we want. It'll have to restart your Unreal. Back in our empty level, go to window and under virtual production, enable USD stage. Here's where things get really, really cool. I wouldn't think about this like we're importing something into Unreal. Eventually we'll import, but for now, we're really just opening the USD file within the USD stage settings. So go to file and open and find the USD export that we made from Blender. And just like that, we have pretty much a one-to-one -one view of what we had in Blender, but we can do even better. Let's match the lighting since we're working in Blender, we want this to be the standard or our baseline. But in Unreal, we have some auto exposure settings, similar to an auto exposure on a camera. I don't personally love this. I want more control. So go up to add and search for post and select post process volume. Instead of our changes applying within this box, we want to expand the effect. So select it and under details, search for the word infinite and turn on infinite extent. Now search exposure. We want our metering mode to be manual instead of auto. And I found an exposure compensation value of around eight to match what I had in the render view in Blender, but you might have to tweak that for your own scene. The idea here is just to get a basic match. And in Blender, under the color management properties, I also set that to high contrast. Now here's what's really convenient. In Blender, let's change something, maybe the color of this light. To apply the changes, just press Q and export over the top of the old USD file. Back in Unreal, under USD stage, just choose File and Reload. And like magic, it's updated. Remember, these aren't imported into Unreal yet. This is kind of like a preview or a staging area. That's why it's called Stage. So now we can come and check in on Unreal and see how things are looking. And when we're ready to bring it into our game, we'll go to Actions and Import. That lets us choose a folder in our content drawer. On the left, we see what's getting imported. On the right, our options, if Actor is checked, not only will it add everything into our content drawer, but it adds actors to the scene exactly where they're placed right now. If you uncheck this, it adds objects into the content drawer, but the scene will be empty. Since we're set dressing in Blender, when it's time to import, we'll turn on actors. One more little thing before I close this, under stage options, we get this awesome option called Nanite Triangle Threshold. Anything under this number just imports like normal, but anything over this threshold gets set up as a nanite object automatically. A million polygons is a pretty high threshold. I doubt we have anything that high in our scene. I might lower that when we actually import, maybe something like 500,000. For now, that's pretty much all we need to look at. But since we're still working on our scene, 
In Blender, let's just hit cancel since we're not ready to bring it out of stage yet. I just wanted to show you the whole workflow. Something else I'd like to add is the player start object. If I hit play, this is where the third person character drops in. Kind of a nice way to preview the environment. USD doesn't really come with automatic collisions though, which isn't a huge problem. We'll add them anyway, but for now that means as a starting point, select the floor, go to details, select the static mesh and double click it. Under collision, for now, let's just add box simplified. Make sure to save and close. Now we can walk around the scene and get a feel for our environment from the player's perspective. Anything you want the player to collide with, you'll have to add collisions for. The good news is Unreal remembers these collisions even when we change and reload the USD stage file. So we can model, texture, light, do everything in Blender and periodically pop over to Unreal for a quick play test and walk through the current environment. Once the scene is blocked out, I'll spend some time modeling unique objects on the wall need. Don't forget though, there are always libraries of assets you can tap into if they fit your style. Of course, every model I use in this video is available on my site, offworlddepot.com. If you download for Blender, they come ready to use with Blender's asset browser. It's really nice just to drag and drop assets into the scene. I have two main texturing workflows, tiled and baked. Baked textures are good for small to medium props that can maintain enough detail with a 4K map or less. Blender will bring over any images you have plugged into the principled shader. Tiled textures are for objects that are too big to have enough detail with a single 4K map or are just more convenient with a tiled approach. Things like the floor, the walls. Don't be afraid to literally break up some areas. Maybe the tile here is broken. Rather than try to create a texture with broken tile, let's actually just model some broken tiles with our existing trim sheet. We'll need a separate mesh underneath with a dirt texture. As far as set dressing goes and Blender, I like to keep two things in mind. One, instance wherever you can. That just makes your life easier so you only have to edit one object and it propagates across everything. To instance, that's Alt-D to duplicate instead of Shift-D. And second, make sure you tile with the actual UVs, not the mapping node. This way everything comes over in Unreal already tiled and working and we don't have to set that up again in Unreal. Once it's time to import, you can follow the steps I outlined earlier. In Unreal, go to USD Stage, then Actions, and Import. Choose a spot in your content drawer, or create a new folder, and enable actors if you want the scene laid out like we have it in Blender. For me, I babysat my USD file in Unreal pretty closely, so I don't really have any huge changes to make. The only thing I really want to do is to get some decals going in Unreal. I like to add a new folder for decals to keep it clean. I'll grab some cardboard decals from offworlddepot.com, just drag and drop the folder into Unreal and everything comes over. Now for each decal, we need to right click and add a new material. Double click the material. Instead of surface material, we want a deferred decal. This gives us an error. All it's telling us is the blend mode can't be opaque. So change that to translucent. Now, it's a simple matter of dragging in our maps. At the most basic level, a decal is an opacity map. Beyond that though, we can plug in normal, roughness, or anything else. Now save, and since this is a decal and not a surface material, we can just drag and drop it into our scene. You should rotate it for the surface that you intend to project it on, and we get this nice green box that shows us where it's projecting. Unlock the scaling and you can scale down so we don't get unwanted projections outside of our intended object. Alternatively, select any object, search decal and uncheck receives decals. Now, decals won't affect it. Decals aren't just for adding graffiti to walls. You can add things like cracks and damage and stains and grunge and just all sorts of stuff. Again, please go consider supporting me on my support website. I built this from scratch, which means a portion of your money doesn't go to any third parties like YouTube or Patreon. It all goes towards supporting artists, creating 
assets for the website as well as me creating these videos. That's all, let me know what you wanna see next and I'll see you in the next one.